How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. On this episode of Back to the Mac, I'm giving you my five takeaways from my recent hands-on time with the 2019 27-inch 5K iMac. Check it out right now. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So the first thing that's gonna strike you about this new iMac is that the design is exactly the same. Nothing has changed from a design perspective at all. Uh, that can be a good or bad thing depending on your, your feelings about the current iMac design. I personally am kind of indifferent about it. Obviously, I think the bezels are a little large, but that 5K display is still so good, even this many years later, that I can kind of overlook it, to be honest with you. And I think that's one of the reasons why Apple is able to continuously use this design because that 5K display that dominates the front surface is still so very good. So that's really, I mean, to be honest, the first thing that's gonna strike you, it looks exactly the same. So let's talk about the worst thing about the new iMac, shall we? The worst thing about the new iMac is that they still ship with Fusion drives in the base model configurations. Fusion drives, you say? Hmm. Yeah, those are those horrible mechanical slash flash storage hybrids that were sort of like stopgap solutions between, you know, traditional spinning disk and flash storage that we have today. Unfortunately, Apple still sells that stopgap solution and it is a major bottleneck in this new 5K iMac. And it's horrible, for lack of a better word. I would absolutely avoid it like the plague, if at all possible. So why is the Fusion Drive so terrible? Well, let's step over to the bench and let me demonstrate to you why it's so bad. Okay, so in this first example, I have a project stored on the Fusion Drive, and I'm exporting this 4K project. It's about 10 minutes long. I'm using a, a compressor setting, H.264, 45,000 kilobits per second, and notice how choppy the GPU history is. That is because it is exporting from and to that Fusion Drive, and it's causing a major bottleneck. Now compare that to the same project stored on an external Thunderbolt 3 SSD and exporting to that same drive. Notice no choppiness on the GPU history and it's much faster. In fact, you can see here 665 seconds for the Fusion drive to export that project. And since the iMac Pro comes with the internal one terabyte SSD, obviously much faster, 383 seconds. But when that project is stored on an external SSD bypassing that Fusion Drive, the 2019 iMac's even faster to export. Now here's another example. I have a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter connected via Thunderbolt 3, and I'm copying a large video file from my 10 gigabit connected NAS. And you can see the time's actually increasing. Two minutes, now three minutes, it's, it's really slow. That's not a bottleneck with the Thunderbolt 3 connection or with that ethernet connection. No, the bottleneck's occurring because of the fusion drive. How do we know that? Well, let's just go and look at the transfer stats. You can see 133 megabytes per second, 114, 116. So I'm gonna cancel this and I'm gonna drag and drop that same exact file to the Thunderbolt 3 SSD, bypassing the fusion drive. And you're gonna see that it is much, much faster. So you can already see it's rolling, about a minute left. So let's look at the uh, the network stats for this transfer and we'll see how much faster it is. So let's go up here, look at that, 650 megabytes per second. Compare that to roughly 100 megabytes per second for the Fusion Drive transfer. Yeah, that Fusion Drive is a crazy bottleneck. Now, despite that awful Fusion Drive, I have to admit that this, from a price to performance perspective, is still a very impressive machine. For $24.99, half the price of an iMac Pro, you get an eight core CPU that can really go toe to toe with the iMac Pro base configuration. So you already saw where the 2019 iMac beat the base model iMac Pro on that 4K video export when bypassing the Fusion Drive. But here, you see a better single core Geekbench benchmark and you see multi-core scores that are neck and neck with the base model iMac Pro. But there is a gotcha, as we already alluded to, you're going to need a faster storage medium in a lot of cases to really benefit from that added performance. Another big difference between these two machines has to do with RAM upgrades. With the iMac Pro, you actually have to take it into an Apple certified specialist and they will upgrade the RAM for you because you can't access it without cracking the machine open. 
With the 5K iMac, on the other hand, you can do it yourself. You can go out to Amazon, purchase the correct RAM, and upgrade the RAM modules yourself up to 128 gigabytes. Now the last big differentiating factor between the 5K iMac and the iMac Pro is the amount of I.O. available. The iMac Pro has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, so not only can you connect more physical devices to the machine directly, but there's also an extra Thunderbolt 3 bus, so there's more bandwidth to work with. So that means you're gonna be able to connect two GPUs to the iMac Pro, you can also connect multiple high bandwidth SSDs like the OWC Thunderblade SSD, have those in a RAID configuration and actually get better performance than you would if you were connecting over the same bus. So that's a pretty big difference right there alone, especially for creative professionals who use high bandwidth peripherals in their workflow. Now it doesn't stop there though. There's also the SD card slot differences. Now when you just look at it, they both look the same, the two slots, but the iMac Pro actually has a UHS-2 enabled slot, so it's gonna be able to work with UHS-2 media, which is faster. You're gonna have faster read and write transfer speeds. Uh, so you're gonna be able to pull 4K footage off, raw images much faster than you would be able to with the normal SD card reader on the 5K iMac. And then finally, there's 10 gigabit ethernet built right into the iMac Pro, which is gonna allow you to transfer files to, for instance, a Synology NAS, much faster than you would be able to from a 5K iMac. So these I.O. differences individually may not seem like a big deal, but when added all together, it really does make a difference for certain workflows. So here's my thoughts on the matter. I think the 5K iMac is actually a pretty good deal considering the amount of processing power you get for the price they're asking. That being said, you have to have some way or some plan to bypass that fusion drive. That is absolutely a must. So whether that be during the build to order process, you, you configure an SSD, or whether it be after you get the machine and you bypass it using a Thunderbolt 3 SSD or even a USB SSD, is gonna be better than that fusion drive. Now one last thing I wanna mention as someone who has a huge pet peeve for fan noise, the 5K iMac is much more likely to fire up its fans to the point where they're audible. For instance, when just doing run of the mill activities like recording a voiceover in Final Cut Pro 10, those fans will fire up to the point where you can actually hear them and your microphone may even pick them up. So that is definitely something that I don't like. Whereas the iMac Pro is always whisper quiet whenever I'm performing a, a voiceover at least. Sometimes the fans do fire up on the iMac Pro, but it's a lot more rare that that happens when compared to the 5K iMac. So something to keep in mind if you hate fan noise like I do. Okay, so as is sort of a tradition with Back to the Mac episodes, I am giving away a product related to the Mac. And this is the Akedio Thunder 3 Dock Pro. It has 10 gigabit ethernet. It has a UHS-2 card reader. Uh, it's a really good dock for those of you who don't have an iMac Pro you can get 10 gigabit ethernet right there on your on your 5K iMac now, or even your uh, MacBook Air. So if you comment on this post, you're automatically entered. You don't have to subscribe to the channel. You don't have to do any of that. Uh, I'm just gonna pick someone from the comments because hey, I appreciate you guys engaging. So please leave some insightful commentary. Like I said, I'm gonna pick someone at random and I will leave a post in the comments to let you know who won. So ladies and gents, I just want to take a second, first of all, to say thank you for watching this episode of Back to the Mac. And thank you in general for just supporting the channel over the years. I really appreciate it. Also really love to hear the constructive criticism and the really nice comments that I receive from time to time. So that's always nice. Kind of keeps you going and energized. I appreciate that very much. Uh, one last reminder, I want to say that if you have questions, please leave them down below. And I'm going to pick some of those questions for the next episode and make sure I read those uh, at least a handful of them and try to answer those in the next episode. So please feel free to leave some comments and questions down below and I'll try my best to get to them. And also one last reminder, the giveaway, I'm just gonna pick someone at random uh, from the comments. Don't feel like you have to spam the comments or just leave comments just for the purpose of the giveaway. That's kind of against the spirit of how we do this. I really want engaging uh, commentary in the comment section and uh, I will just pick someone at random to win this special Akedio dock, which is really awesome. 10 gigabit ethernet, I mean, UHS-2 SD card, it's pretty sweet. All right, enough talking. I will see you guys in the next video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.